Hi, Josh. Thank you so much for, for joining me and for others who are listening today. Really good to see you and appreciate your time. Do you want to start by just telling us briefly who you are and where you are now? Yeah, um, I, I, I'm Joshua Norris, uh, uh, Reverend Joshua Norris. Um, I'm a uh, uh, minister in uh, North Essex, working for the United Reformed Church. Got two churches uh, up on the Suffolk border. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I've been here for the last six years. Fantastic. Um, do you want to just tell us what your connection is to, to CBC? You were here a few years ago, weren't you? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's quite a number of years now. It's gone quite quick. Um, I, I was a, a student at Canterbury Christchurch um, University, um, and, I, and this was when 2000 and 2003, I think, to 2006, um, and uh, found myself uh, roughly around the end of my first year uh, at Canterbury Baptist Church. Um, eventually managed to settle in a church, which... Uh, took a bit of time um, and uh, got involved with everything that was going on at, at CBC, which was great. I seem to remember you played in goal for... I played, I played a game in goal and I played it at centre-half for the football team, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> a, a few times. A lot of fond memories of that, it's particularly the day. days of pulled muscles and uh, hid, yeah. hideous, hideous, hideous training sessions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Josh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your call into ministry? You're in you're in full time Christian ministry now. Um, perhaps tell us a little bit about how that came to pass. Uh, what was your your sense of of being called like? It was a tricky one for me because I grew up in a in in a family where my dad was a minister, um, and uh, uh, there was a certain degree of expectation on me as a as a, a young teenager that I would in some shape, form or, or another, um, be uh, more <laughs> spiritually interested than I was, shall we say. Um, but when I when I became a Christian at the age of 15, I got a clear sense that I felt like God was asking me to be a, a preacher. Um, oh, and wow. so I went through a period where all I wanted to do was preach. Um, and um, so my dad actually gave me some opportunities in his church just to do a little kind of five minute me message in, in the service here and there just to kind of feel it out and see what it was like. Um, and um, as time went on, particularly when I went to, to, to university, um, that's when it really kind of kicked in. Um, Dave Stedman, who was minister at the time, and uh, uh, yourself gave me opportunities to, to, to speak at uh, region I think it was called then um, and um, I was able to do some preaching at, at URC churches in places like Whitstable and things like that so um, it, that was when I really kind of started to, to what I would consider hone that that skill um, and and Dave at the time asked me whether or not I wanted to explore um, going to Spurgeon's um, as a possibility of, of doing that and and at the time that didn't really feel right. I was still in my kind of rebellious phase, didn't want to go into ministry. I didn't want to be a minister like my dad in particular. Um, I had this vision in my own mind that I was going to be this sort of big conference speaker. And I think I was a bit, um, had a particular image of what kind of preacher I wanted to be. Um, and um, I kicked against it for years. Uh, so when I left university, I, I ended up going into youth work um, and, uh, um, I sort of fell into that really, um, partly because I didn't want to go into full-time ministry, partly because I didn't feel ready for full-time ministry, um, and, uh, and, and partly because actually I think I still needed a little bit of life experience before going in. Um, and it was only after I did a few years, very tricky years, um, in youth ministry where I felt a little bit like a square peg in a round hole at times. Um, that I, I relented and, and sort of went uh, and, and pushed the door and uh, of going through through candidacy for ministry. Um, and um, it was only really going through the candidacy process that I began to really feel like that was where I fitted. Um, and uh, I, I went through that and it was the easiest thing I ever had to do. All the doors swung open. It just made a huge amount of sense. 
Um, I felt comfortable in it. I had doubts. I, I always had doubts, um, but it just sounds, it just seemed right um, that I was doing what God wanted me to do, even though I doubted that what I was doing was what God wanted me to do. Uh, it's a very paradoxical place to be, and I think there's a lot of wrestling that goes in with that sort of search. Um, and found myself in it, and I, and and um, yeah, I, I do a lot of preaching, a lot of teaching, and I, I found as time went by that that my main calling, my main gifting, lied within the preaching and the teaching side of things, and and I get a lot of buzz from doing that. It's a lot of a lot of fun. <laughs> That's brilliant. Just um, if you could, if you could give somebody one piece of advice for discerning their own call, what would it be? I would say concentrate on your relationship with God, um, because the more you get to know God, the easier it is to hear his voice and to recognize the moments when God says, yes, this is what I want you to do or no, this isn't what I want you to do. Um, I think when we walk closely with God, we have that capacity and that ability to hear his voice more clearly. Um, and if we're trying to explore our own calling, um, it's important that we hear God's voice clearly. And, and everything that I say to my congregations um, is everything about the Christian walk, particularly if we want to go into some kind of ministry or if we want to go into some kind of um, service, be it lay or ordained. Um, we, need, we need to have that all stem from that place of relationship. Um, ultimately, God cares about us being in relationship with him. He cares about that more than he cares about what we do for him um, yeah. that's that's my personal opinion um and so i think uh, if you're exploring that that call um draw close to god um and uh, and get to know him uh, because everything else i think stems from that it's a byproduct it's very helpful thank you just um just finally is there a is there a more suitable personality for ministry we were talking a bit about this before we started yeah. to record it was helpful talking yeah. about introverts and extroverts yeah well i'm a person personally quite an introverted kind of character um i um when i was in youth ministry in particular um this seemed to be a point of contestation between myself and others that i wasn't very outward going i was very kind of in my own head um and um i think uh folk expected me to be more extroverted and a bit of a pie piper and sort of uh, play the tune and the kids would run <laughs> um, and uh, that wasn't my nature that wasn't my character um, uh, but um, as as I kind of have gone in through ministry particularly in the six years that I've been here in Essex um, and I, I found myself listening to a, a, a talk with uh, quite a quite well-known preacher leader um, within the church, Clive Urquhart, where he was talking about being an introverted character and how that would make him tired. Um, and, um, you know, it would, it, would, it would take a lot from him to, to put himself out there. And, and, and I could kind of relate to that. Um, uh, but I, I really realized that as time went by, um, the introverted um, nature wasn't a hindrance that actually it gave me other strengths um made me quite an analytical person quite a good problem solver um it created um a, a, a will if you like to try and find things out learn things research things um and um that all feeds into my teaching um uh, you know you can see the books behind me i mean i'm a compulsive reader um i i, I like to read through scripture i like to read through different opinions, um, break it down, try and find ways of putting it across to people in ways they understand. Um, so the short answer I would say is, I don't think there's a suitable personality for ministry. I think um, all we can do is be a minister from who we are. Um, and, and I think if we operate in from, from in and from who, we, who God has made us to be. I think it comes down to the fact that when God calls us into ministry, he is calling us and he is calling us as individuals. Um, and uh, it's about who, who God has made us to be. And if he is calling us, it's because he thinks we can do it 
as us. Um, and, and so I, I don't think there is a suitable personality for ministry, but I think there is a, um, you know, there are, there are certain aspects that we are asked to do that might, might, might go against our natural, natural uh, personality types. But um, I think in the end, all we can be is us um and and god will allow us to thrive in 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 who we are and he'll make up the difference where where we lack and um i think from the extroverted point of view i mean i have a little switch that i call it a switch that i can flick and go into extroverted mode but that doesn't come naturally it's something i've had to learn um because there are times when that's necessary um but i think in the long run um god chose me and and that's the most important thing and humbling thing as well actually that god chose me even though once upon a time somebody said that what i was wasn't enough brilliant josh thank you so much for your time today and thank you for sharing so openly and we pray god's blessing upon you and your continued ministry thank you and uh, I, I send my blessings to, to CBC and thank you all for, for, for what you've done in playing a part in, in my journey. So thank you. Thanks, Josh. God bless. Take care. Take care.